Okay, so uh, unit one, day four, um, we're going to be using applications of systems. So you spend a few days solving systems, and you're probably wondering, why do we care about systems? So there's a lot of times in real life that um, a situation comes up where um, there's two variables, and there's two pieces of information, and there's lots of answers for the one, and lots of answers for the other, but there's only one, one solution for both. Okay, so... And you know it's here. I just circled something we're going to do. We're not going to do all of these. Um, if you happen to want a, just an example, we, you, know, you can come ask me and we can do another one together. But um, to start out with this, suppose you have a part-time job delivering packages, maybe a UPS guy or FedEx or um, post office, and your employer pays you at a flat rate of $7 per hour. You discover that a competitor pays employees $2 per hour, so it's not quite as good pay, but you do get paid per delivery. So if you get more deliveries, then you can make more money possibly. So for part A, we're supposed to write a system of equations to model the pay, P, for deliveries. And if you notice, then you know, there's, there's pay, there's deliveries, and there's hours that can vary. So that we're going to narrow it down to just say you have um, a four-hour shift, just to make it simple. So for you, where you work, you get paid $7 an hour. So if you worked for four hours, that'd be $28. There is no other variable. It doesn't depend on delivery, so there's not a second um, variable there. Now, the competitor, they pay you $2 an hour plus $0.35 cents for every delivery. Okay? So there, I'm sorry, $2 an hour for four hours, so that'd be eight. Sorry. Good. Get myself caught up there. Um, so now, number two, how many deliveries would the competitor's employees have to make in a four-hour shift to make the same pay you make in a four-hour shift. Okay, so we're going to assume, or we want to find out when is the pay equal. So if these both, both these expressions equal P, I'm going to set these expressions equal to each other. So for part B, I'm going to put 28 equals 8 plus 0.35, subtract 8, and then divide by 0.35. Now, 20 divided by 0.35 does not come out to be a nice, super neat answer. Um, so we'll just put the decimal down. You need 57.14 deliveries. Obviously, you have to either round up or round down. You'd say uh, 57 deliveries, you'll make a little, they'll make a little less than you. 58, they'll make more than you. But there's none that can be exact. <clears throat> uh, number two, suppose you eight, bought eight oranges and one grapefruit for 460. Later, you went back and you bought six oranges and three grapefruit for 480. You lost your receipts, and you want to find what the prices were for each of them. Maybe a friend asked, "Hey, how much does that orange cost, or how much does the grapefruit cost?" Um, so you got to go back and do a little bit of math. This happens all the time to you, I'm sure, in real life. Um, so, say I got eight oranges. I'm gonna put a lowercase o for oranges, plus one grapefruit. You add them together, you get four dollars and sixty cents. And this one, O, would represent the cost of an orange, and G represents the cost of a grapefruit. Later on, you went back, you got six oranges and three grapefruit, and that cost you $4.80. Okay. Lots of things you can do here. You can, um, you know, up above, we basically did a substitution. Here, you could do substitution if you want. G would not that be that hard to find. Or you could do elimination. You have to do some multiplying. Like, I'd, I'd have to multiply this by negative 3. So if I do that by negative 3, I'll just do it this way. I got negative 24O minus 3G equals 4.6060. 6O plus 3G equals 480. Okay. I'm going to add straight down. That would be negative 18O. <clears throat> be very careful if you're doing this. Maybe, maybe O wasn't a good variable to use. Um, R for oranges or something like that. And then the Gs would disappear. And I would, um, I didn't multiply this one, I'm sorry. This would not be 460, this would be negative 1380. Good grief. You might think you can trust a math teacher, but it turns out you can't. Uh, but anyway, so you add these together, you get negative 9. Now, in this case, some people would jump right to it and say, an orange costs $2. Be careful, though, because you're dividing by negative 18. Okay, so an orange would be... 50 cents. Okay. Now, if you plug that back in, I'm going to save some time here. If you plug that back in there, grapefruit then is point, it's 60 cents. 
Okay. You just got to plug it back into one of these. Money, this one is, I think, it can be simple because they're all almost exactly the same setup, but it can be difficult if you don't remember that setup. Okay, so let's say we have quarters and dimes. Okay, so we have quarters and dimes. You have twice as many quarters as dimes. So what do I have more of? Well, I have more quarters. So I need to double the lesser to equal the bigger. Okay, so I have twice as many quarters as dimes. That means my number of quarters would equal two times the number of dimes. A lot of people go the other route with that. They'll say, they'll just read it, or they'll write it as they read it. Twice as many quarters, they'll put 2q equals dimes. So 2q equals dimes. But the problem with that is, if I take the number of quarters and double it, now there's four times as many as dimes. So be careful on that. It's kind of the backwards, kind of the opposite of what you think. Now that's a statement simply about them being coins. A quarter and a dime are both, co are, are both coins. Um, the next statement has to do with value. So I have to throw in something about a dime being worth 10 cents and a quarter being worth 25 cents. Okay, so uh, altogether I have 960. So if I took the number of quarters uh, times, I mean I'll do dimes first. So number of dimes times 0.1 plus the number of quarters times 0.25, then I'll get $9.60. So if I have a value in there, i got to multiply by their value. Up here, there's nothing about value. It's just them being coins. There's twice as many quarters as dimes. Okay? And this one actually is um, set up pretty easy to be a substitution problem. So I'm going to, for Q right here, I'm going to put in 2D in its place. So 0.1 times the number of dimes plus 0.25 times, and instead of Q, again, 2D, equals 960. I eliminated the, the quarters here. Um, this would be 0.1D plus, um, if I double that, it would be 0.5D. I'm not sure why I went from capital to lowercase. I, these all should be capital. I apologize. So 0.1 times the number of dimes plus 0.6, or 0.5 times the number of dimes would be 960. So now we've got 0.6 times the number of dimes equals 9.6. 9 Divide by 0.6, the number of dimes, uh, in this case would be 16. And then the number of quarters in, well, I have twice as many quarters. So if I have 16 dimes, I must have 32 quarters. And I also, I typed in the calculator, I took 16 times 0.1 plus 32 times 0.25, and I got $9.60, so I, I know I was right. Okay, I'm going to flip it over here. I'm just going to do these two on the, on the back side. Um, like I said, I don't have time to do all of these. It, it would be a 30-minute video if I did. Um, number one, the Browns scored 13 more points than the Saints. So kind of two ways you could write this. You could, go, you could say, if the Browns have 13 more, that means i got to take 13 away from them to equal the Saints. Or if you wanted to, you could have said Saints plus 13 equals Browns. And in both ways, it, it makes them equal. The total of their scores was 47. So the Browns plus the Saints equals 47. And again, B represents the Browns score. S represents the Saints score. Um, so this is set up pretty good for substitution. So I got B plus, I'm going to take this S out and put in B minus 13, that equals 47. So 2B minus 13 equals 47. So 2B is going to equal 60. So that means the Browns scored 30 points. It wouldn't take too long if you take 13 away from that. That means the Saints scored 17. Okay. Yeah, if you ever want to check, just plug it into both of those. So does this add up to 47? Yep. If I take 13 away from this, do I get that? Yep. <clears throat> okay, and the last one I'm going to do is number three here on the back. <coughs> um, Sarah's the director of the Huna marching band. She must order 30 new uniforms, so just uniforms. Now we're going to specify. There are usually five more girls than twice the number of boys. Okay, so <clears throat> first off, she needs to order 35. So the number of boy uniforms plus the number of girl uniforms needs to equal 35. Okay? The next step is where it gets tricky. Some people 
we'll mess this up. It says there are usually five more girls than twice the number of boys. So twice the number of boys, normally this, the number of girls is five more than this. That means I got to take the number of girls minus five. A lot of people will read that and say five more girls and say girls plus five. Got to be careful in that. You got to be careful with that. So twice the number of boys, if I double it, the girls are five more than that. So if I take five away, it'll equal twice the number of boys. Okay. Now if, with this one, um, you could solve for G, you could solve for G, you could do some substitution. I just noticed that if, if I took, um, let's see here, if I took the G over here, so it'd be minus G, I'd have BG, BG, and then, so I just flip this one around, and so I have B plus G, I'm going to leave this one alone, put this on the left side, 2B minus G equals negative 5, you put that on the other side, now the G's cancel out, so 3 times the number of boys is going to equal 30, that means the boys equals 10, and if I add up to 35, that means the number of girls is 25, okay, girls, 25 is 5 more than twice the 10. So now I know I got it. It makes them both true.